Hello, and welcome to Learning with Lovo. To round off my initial coverage of the supercarrier module, today I will be going over carrier launches and departures for all cases. I will be using the FA-18C Hornet and the supercarrier module. I will be assuming you know how to perform some basic techniques, such as operating the radios, inputting a TACAN and a course line. Here are the keys I will be using aside from the HOTAS axes. Landing gear, flaps up and down, nose wheel steering, launch bar up and down, trimmer climb, wheel brake, COM 1 and 2, and salute. Let's begin with the basic premise. You're on the carrier and you want to be in the air. This is the super carrier module, so you will need to use the deck crew to hook up and launch. Now there's nothing really stopping you from launching and going on your merry way, but if you're interested in cooperating with other players or realism, then there are a few procedures you can follow. Basic practice. You will taxi to a catapult. Let the deck crew hook you up. Launch. Perform a clearing turn, then fly BRC. Fly seven miles away from the carrier. In a case one, rendezvous with your flight and start your mission. In a case two or three, fly in a 10 mile circuit around the carrier to a pre-briefed radial, depart on that radial and rendezvous with your flight. Let's take a look at that in more detail. Taxiing. You're in your parking spot on the carrier, fully started up. Go ahead and go through the takeoff checklist on your checklist page, with the exception of extending your wings. Only do this if there's room to do so. You should not lock the wing fold handle until five seconds after they are fully extended, though I'm not sure if the damage from failing to do this is modeled in DCS. Your anti-skid and landing lights should be off on the deck. Ensure your altimeter setting matches that of the mission briefing found by pressing left alt and B. Check the standby attitude indicator is uncaged in case of hood failure during launch. Set up the TACAN to the carrier's frequency and input a course line to match BRC, the carrier's heading. Both should be available in the mission briefing. I'd recommend using the radar altimeter with the warning set to 450 feet. Flaps should be set to half. Nose wheel steering should be set to high gain by pressing the nose wheel steering button with wings folded or holding it with wings extended. Push the takeoff trim button and then trim nose up depending on your weight which can be seen in the checklist page. 44,000 pounds and below is 16 degrees. 45 to 48,000 pounds, 17 degrees. 49,000 pounds and above, 19 degrees. If you have an uneven loadout, you are supposed to trim the lighter side wing down, but the maths is complex and the figures aren't easy to come by. The asymmetric storm moment, which is the extra weight in pounds times the distance in feet the weight is from the center of the aircraft. Going from 2 degrees wing down trim at 11 foot pounds to 6 degrees wing down trim at 18 foot pounds and up. This requires you know how heavy each store is and how far each hard point is from the center of the aircraft. Perhaps in the future ED will implement this being worked out for us, but for now I'd recommend keeping asymmetrical loadouts to a minimum. Ensure your chocks are removed by using external view. If necessary, Use the comms menu and the ground crew option to remove them. Release the parking brake and carefully taxi towards the catapult of your choice. The supercarrier module guide tells us the AI ground controller will announce to us our catapult when you enter the jet, but this isn't implemented yet, so taxi to whichever seems best. If you are aware of aircraft in the process of recovering, only use catapults 1 and 2 so as to keep the landing deck clear. Hook up. Once you are behind the jet blast deflector of a free catapult, the yellow shirt standing over it will begin to give you instructions. The yellow shirts are aircraft directors and catapult officers. The instructions are unfold wings, taxi forward, turn right, turn left, apply brakes, release brakes. I am now directing your aircraft, lower launch bar, and raise launch bar. He will direct you to the start of the catapult near where the shuttle is, then tell you to lower your launch bar into the track. 
Doing so will disengage nose wheel steering, as turning the nose wheel when the bar is in the track could damage it, or injure deck crew nearby. One of the green shirts, who are generally catapult and arresting gear crew, will then install the holdback bar onto your nose gear and the cleat, which stops your aircraft moving forward off the shuttle when you apply thrust. The aircraft director will then instruct you to taxi forward while another green shirt gives feedback to him on how far to go. Your launch bar will go over the shuttle and the holdback bar will hit the buffer keeping you in place. This may take a fair bit of thrust to achieve. When instructed, raise the launch bar, seating it in the shuttle. The green shirt will perform a check and then clear the area. Launching The aircraft director will then pass you to the other yellow shirt, the launching officer who will instruct you to run up your engines, placing the aircraft in tension. There are three power settings to launch with, mil, mil max, and max. Mil being military power, max being full afterburner, mil max being military power, pushing to full afterburner when your launch begins. If you weigh over 45,000 pounds, you must perform a max launch. If less than this, you can perform any launch. In real life, sitting in tension with the afterburners on will degrade the jet blast deflectors. This isn't really a concern in DCS, so you needn't worry too much about your choice. Once you have pushed the throttle to your setting, wait 4 seconds to ensure all warning and caution lights are out. Check your engine instruments and wipe the controls. This means moving the stick and rudders as far as they will go in each direction before returning them to neutral. At this point, you are ready to launch. Press the salute command or select it from the comms menu. Leave the throttle as it is, or if you're performing a mil max launch, prepare to advance to max power. You can leave the stick alone until airborne. You will see the deck crew crouch down, the launching officer will return the salute, check the deck is clear forward, check for thumbs up from the safety officers in white, ensure the deck crew are all crouched, ensure the deck edge suspend light is not flashing, and then he will touch the deck and point to the front of the ship. You will then launch off the catapult. The aircraft will automatically find the appropriate AOA, so raise your gear and when you have a positive rate of climb, take back control of the aircraft. Raise the flaps and accelerate to 300 knots while performing a clearing turn. This is a short turn to the side of the ship you took off from. Cats 1 and 2 turn right, cats 3 and 4 turn left. Turn back to parallel BRC and begin a climb to 500 feet. This is where the cases start to differ. Case 1 Departure so you're flying parallel to BRC at 300 knots, 500 feet. Continue in this manner until 7 nautical miles from the ship. Now you are free to climb, rendezvous with your flight, and commence your mission. Case 2 Departure As before, continue flying to 7 nautical miles, but now we turn to intercept the 10 nautical mile arc. This is a circle at that distance away from the carrier. Once past 7 nautical miles, you can climb until just under the cloud deck. You continue on the arc until you reach your departure radial. This is a direction from the ship you choose with your flight prior to launching. As you depart, you would input the reciprocal of it as a course line. So the 065 radial would input as 245 degrees. And now you have a course line on your HSI. Once on this heading, climb at 300 knots till above the cloud layer. Proceed to 20 nautical miles away from the carrier, and you may now rendezvous with your flight at a prearranged altitude to the left of the radial. Case 3 Departure A Case 3 Departure is very similar to a Case 2, the only difference being that instead of performing a clearing turn and holding 500 feet, you continue straight and climb to pass 5 nautical miles at a minimum of 1500 feet. After this, it matches case 2. We would expect the AI to control us during a case 3, and possibly the portion of the case 2 that is within the cloud layer. However, this is not implemented at the time of producing this video. Extra notes. Notes worth adding to this are that during night launches, instead of saluting the launching officer, you would turn on your external lights, though I doubt this would be implemented with the AI. In addition to this, Case 3 launches should be at least 30 seconds apart. And that during a Case 3 departure you would expect to make the following calls over comms. Airborne, passing 2,500 feet, arcing, established outbound, which means on the assigned radial, 
Popeye with altitude, which is a report that you are flying in clouds or an area of reduced visibility. On top, with altitude. Kilo. I think Kilo refers to gaining a radar track on your flight, but I'm not sure. That's all I have on carrier launches. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Learning with Lovo.